Welcome back. I'm Pete, and you're watching the Custom Guard Channel. But we're gonna work out a Bobcat today. And it's gonna be awesome. Since this one's a Silverado, maybe you guys could just call me the, the Silverado Man. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, got a 2008 Buick Lucerne. Uh, the customer complaint is uh, they ran over they ran over a pothole, and then she noticed ever since she ran over that pothole that she has a grinding noise, a clunking noise, and a clanking noise. So I couldn't find anything clunking or clanking. I think maybe the wheel bearing on the other side got jarred loose. I already replaced that one. I did a little short video on it. I'll show you. But anyways, uh, we're just going to put the bearings in. I'm going to go out. We're going to take it out for a test drive and see what we find. So I already did the other side. Uh, we're going to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to do this side. But here's the bearing out of the other side. It's, it's really bad. Uh, the grease in, this, in it is all icky brown rusty so this does have a sensor that goes on here a sensor ring and that stuck in the other side and I had to I had to ruin it to get it out of there you you just do that that just happens so the reason I did the other side first was not so I know how to do it but because I was waiting for parts so I finally got the bearing. She wanted a mid-grade grade bearing, which I felt uh, a Timken is a premium bearing. So I got I got Timken bearings. I thought they were made in the USA. Maybe they still are. They used to say Timken USA right on them. I did not see any of that on this bearing. I'll go get it. So here it is. I do not see Timken USA on here anywhere. So the part number is uh, 513179. Let's get it out of the box. So here's the sensor ring is on it. But they used to say, I think it was laser etched right in here. They used to say Timken and then USA right on them. I don't see any laser etching. Here we go. Here's something. So it says Timken and then a part number. So it's still laser etched. It's just right on the end. I didn't see that before. But does not say USA. So somebody could tell me if this is still made in the USA. I'd like to know. All right, I'm thinking we got to get a move on this because I'll tell you what happened. I ordered these parts last night, and the parts store forgot about them, and they didn't bring them until like half an hour ago. They forgot about me. All right, let's get the wheel off there. So I guess I, I didn't show you, but this side has play. So the other side, I know this car. This side was scheduled to get in for wheel bearing replacement. But the other side it didn't have a problem at that time that I was aware of. So she ran over the pot, pothole, loosened it up. It loosened up, and then... Once it loosened up, the bearings inside, they started grinding. I drove it. It sounded like the brake pad was stuck between the rotor and the, and the hub. So next, let's get the caliper off there, and that's a 15. We could 
We could turn it this way. And them bearings up there, they're a little, a little dry. Get a caliper hook ready. That should work. Uh, so next, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this bolt out of this rotor on the outside. So I'm just using a, a T30. This one come right out. Next, we gotta we gotta hammer on the rotor a little bit. Next, I'll, I'll impact the axle nut off. I think I'll put a little penetrating oil on it. Now, same around here, I'll, I'll get this started to get penetrated. This stuff, this stuff actually works. So next, what I like to do is I like to crack the, the wheel bearing. And these got Loctite on them, and we'll put some Loctite back on them. If we just crack these loose, so, so when we're getting that axle nut off there, if it wants to vibrate a little bit and break things loose, All right, let's get the axle nut off. So I'm using a 33 millimeter. Fits on there really nice. There's a little rust in there. All right, next, next let's remove these bolts. They came out hard all, all the way on the other side. So they will on this side too. So we got our ABS wire. Sometimes I always forget to put the shield back on. Now I have to take it apart. But if you're not used to it, mark the outside with an arrow, point the arrow up with a sharpie. Get this last bolt out of here. I'm just using my Stanley um, standable ratchet. Pretty sweet. That's my go-to. 
All right, let's get you guys out of this hole. All right, so next, next we got to knock this bearing out of here. I had a hell of a time on the other side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to knock out a stud. That's what that hole's for, to replace the stud. So next, the easiest way to get these out is we could turn it right to over here. And then we'll use a bolt and a nut and a washer. So this is just a piece of ready rod. If you had a bolt that had some threads on it, That'll work as good, just as good. So put it through there. Put the washer on. Put the nut on. So we want it right close to the outside. Maybe I can move you over to this so side. Something like that. Let me go get a wrench. If you had a bolt, that would probably work better, and you could impact it. Yeah, this side, this side's coming right out. But then what you can do is you can loosen it up. Now we can rotate it down over here. Somewhere in there. So you don't want to be careful that you're pushing on something. Alright, now what I'll do is I'll just hammer on it a little bit. Wrench it some more. And get rid of this jack and bolt. So you don't have to buy one. Just save your bolts. You'll come up with something. I save every good bolt. Splines are a little rusty. Yeah, this one's just got play in it. It is all rusty and cruddy. All right, so next. Next, we need to get this, uh, the old sensor ring out of there. So what I do, I just get a little chisel. This is what I made out of a screwdriver bit. I sharpened it. Not for this car. I've had this. I'll just keep folding that over. I 
I'm being sure just to hit that middle part, the steel. I think it's loose. So I'll take my pry bar. Need to go a little bit more down here. I see it moving. Just need to keep playing with it. There we go. And we'll push this axle inward. that. And there she is. Next we need to clean all of this. That's good on the outside. A little bit right here. There you go. Next, I'll just take an old carbide one like this that's really dull. I'm just getting the corrosion out of there. Next I'll use a, a small um, emery flapper. Almost got me. All right, there's a little bit right over here. Next, I think we'll wire brush this. I didn't have to do that on the other side, but this is all rusty. I'll stouse it all in brake cleaner. that dry just a minute and I'll be right back yeah I think I forgot to turn the camera on uh, I'm kind of pissed all right we're, we got the wheel bearing back in we prepared all that we put some we put some fluid film on the axle man are you kidding me um I feel like I should take this back apart and show you guys I never turned the camera back on that last time. Oh well, I, I'm not taking this back apart. So I never seized all around it. I sprayed flu fluid film on the splines. I put a Loctite on the nuts and bolts. I put Loctite on the bolts. And then we're just snugging them up now so we can get ready to torque them. Don't want to lose the caliper here. 
Man, I never pressed record that last time. I've only been working for five minutes. I wonder what you guys missed. All right, let's 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 torque these. Yeah, I was talking about this. That's why I moved the camera right here. So um, if, if you have a hard time getting it into this bracket, sometimes you do on the aftermarket ones, just give that bracket a little um, sanding and it'll lock in. So, the bearing hub bolts are 96 foot-pounds. Not too many people watch my videos anyways, it doesn't matter. I nailed that one. I went a little over. Ninety-eight point five five. All right, let's just check the other couple again. We're good. All right, so next, let, let's put the rotor on, and we're gonna have to clean that rotor a little bit. I think that's good. Uh, whoever worked on this car before, they cleaned the wheels, but they didn't clean the rotor. So probably the, the most important, we got to get the inside clean. I'll take some brake clean. I'll take her rag. My mother. Alright, we're pretty good and clean. Alright, next we'll give this a little fluid film. Maybe I'll put a little in the rotor too. I know not everybody puts this little screw back in, but I always do. All right, let's put the let's put the caliper back on.
and it's 136 on these. Next, we'll put this nut back on. It's 118 foot pounds on this one. All right, so I think we can put the wheel back on now. Alright, let me torque the wheels and we'll go off for a test drive. Just uh, it says the torque on these is uh, 100. I'm going to go like 105. I'm just going to make sure it's got oil on it. She's just ever so slightly, just a little bit down. All right, we're in the car now. Um, I guess the first thing before we do anything, since we're messing with the brake calipers, is we should make sure we have a brake pedal. And I do. All right, let's go on a drive. All right, so far so good. There is no clunking or clinking. She's nice and smooth now. She was all in that front wheel bearing so so when this thing hit that pothole it jarred that wheel bearing loose and, and caused all these clunks clanks and and grinding noises. We'll just go out of town just a little bit. We'll bring her up to road speed and we'll call this this girl fixed. Yeah, she's like brand new. You know, it's funny if it hit the pothole that hard that it didn't wreck, wreck the tire. need to go any farther. But the problem we're chasing is all fixed. I'm just going to turn, make you turn right up here. I 
Yeah, nice little car. Uh, this old gal, uh, she's uh, she's fixing her up one problem at a time. Uh, it was a little bit unexpected. She hit that pothole and had to come in. I mean, I had her scheduled for this wheel bearing on the driver's side that we just did uh, in about a week. But she hit that pothole and that other wheel bearing went right out within a few days. brakes are nice and smooth. Uh, when I get back to the house, I'll, I'll retorque the wheels and I'll give this gal a call. She'll be so happy. But first, I must stop at the motor mart and get something to eat. Alright guys, uh, there you have it. So that's uh, replacing your wheel bearing on your or your Buick Lucerne. So if you hit a pothole and you hear a grinding noise, uh, check the wheel bearing. It's, it's probably jarred or loose, so just like mine. All right, guys, I hope this video helped somebody. Um, thanks for watching, and you guys can catch me next time, and I'll see you later.